Leo Fan, a man who has been reborn as a mutant Lion King, levels up his skills every time he breathes. A mysterious woman, her clothes all teared into bits, heads to the Mountain of Lions while running away from a military squad. One of the soldiers shoots at the mysterious woman, which causes the entire beast hide beneath them to become so alarmed that one of the ferocious beasts amongst them, a mutant boar, retaliates against the soldiers, forcing them to fall back. Knowing that outrunning a mutant boar is simply impossible, the head leader of the squad loads a bazooka and launches it at the mutant boar. However, it deals no damage at all, so the squad leader loads the grenade launcher to take another shot. At that moment, the main character of this story, Liu Fan, the Golden Lion King, emerges from the beast hide and also joins the mutant boar to fight against the military squad. The ferocious king of the jungle easily takes down all of the puny humans in his sight and ends the battle in the blink of an eye. The lion realizes that he went too far and should have controlled his strength. Yet he blames everything on the military squad, stating that if they didn't cause chaos here in the Lion Mountain, things wouldn't have ended this way. This Golden Lion King Liu Fan reveals to have the ability to speak is not just some ordinary beast, but a man named Liu Fan, who originally was a college student from Japan, who was reborn into this Eskai world as this demonic beast, the Golden Lion. Liu Fan's prowess in this life is so high that even the fiercest monsters are scared of him, and from birds to ants, every single species is loyal to him. A huge anaconda sneaks behind Liu Fan and informs him about the girl who was being chased by the military squad earlier. Apparently, during the chaos, she was affected by the grenade launcher's explosion and fell into the ferocious beast tide, leading the snake to believe that she had not survived the fall. But later at night, Liu Fan manages to find the girl's lifeless body on the ground and notices a mysterious aura surrounding her, causing him to believe her soul is still there. As he, out of curiosity, sucks in the aura away from the dead girl like a Dementor, her soul in its true form also leaves her body, which Liu Fan finds to be rather interesting. Liu Fan takes the girl's ghost back to his den, and she begins to cry as she doesn't want to be anywhere near this terrifying monster. The system pops up in front of Liu Fan out of nowhere and gives him his first mission to bind with the ghost girl quickly before she runs out of time. Suddenly, a ball of flames surrounds Liu Fan, calling him out for going too overboard this time. The ball of flames then goes towards the ghost girl and takes the form of a girl, revealing herself to be a green candle demon named Xiao Zhu. Xiao Zhu, with a big wide smile on her face, calms down ghost girl, assuring her that their king has no bad intentions. According to Xiao Zhu, Liu Fan has too much demon energy in him, which might have leaked inside ghost girl's body and ended up condensing her soul so much that it was no longer able to depart like other souls. Hence, she became a ghost. Apparently, Xiao Zhu also shares the same fate as the ghost girl, and because she is a demon now, she also proposes to the ghost girl to become a demon like her. But before that, she asks her what her business was with the military squad and why she was being chased down by them. Hesitantly, the ghost girl, whose name is Su Ling, tells Xiao Zhu that when she was alive, she had been living in a village that was situated at the foot of the Lion Mountain. Recently, many people from her village started to go missing, leaving only around 20 of them in their tiny village. That time, the mysterious military squad came to their village and surrounded them from everywhere, threatening to murder all of them. They forced old men and children to go inside the forest that was filled with dark energy and sacrificed each and every one of the villagers just to open up a path for them to explore. And when Su Ling's turn came, she too was sent inside the forest. The dark miasma in the forest, which seemed to have a hypnotic effect, surrounded Su Ling and caused her to run in one direction at all times. But then she saw both of her parents' souls who guided her to another path, leading her to fall into a pit. Inside the pit, she found an extremely rare crimson spider lily and a mysterious coffin beside it, making her realize that the military squad must be looking for this flower. Not wanting to let the people who murdered all of the villagers have their way with this too, Su Ling decided to take the flower for herself and eat it to ensure the military squad would never be able to take it. As a consequence of eating this mysterious flower, she was filled with spiritual energy, which allowed her to see clearly even in blinding, pitch black darkness. Shortly after, the military squad came there, so Su Ling hid behind some trees and saw them taking away the coffin. But because they failed to find the crimson spider lily that was supposed to be attached to the coffin, the contractor of that squad refused to give them any money for the mission. 
The military squad assumed that the last girl, whom they forced to enter the forest, must have taken the flower for herself, so they began chasing after her, eventually leading her to enter the Mountain of Lion, where she ended up losing her life. Hearing Su Ling's story, Liu Fan realizes that she must have at the Spirit Coffin's flower, which apparently allows the consumer to obtain a special constitution. In Su Ling's case, she got the Revenge Constitution. Apparently, mercenaries always look for these flowers to become stronger, and that is why the contractor must have been looking for them to sell them to them. In any case, Liu Fan doesn't care about Su Ling's past and only wishes to bind with her, as that is the mission given to him by the system. He goes near Su Ling, offering her to become a member of his team, and as she reluctantly agrees to whatever the terrifying monster asks of her, they bond successfully, prompting the system to trigger another main mission for Liu Fan. Seeing the rewards of this quest, Liu Fan realizes that he might finally gather enough points to attain a human form. Ever since he was reincarnated as a golden lion cub, the system made it so that he became stronger no matter what he did and kept on increasing all of his stats simultaneously. When Liu Fan eventually grew as strong as ever, he became the demon king of the mountain of lions, but never before has it offered him a quest reward. So this mysterious opportunity piques his interest a lot. He sees that he will get a Yang body fragment as a reward, which apparently is going to let him regain his human body. But in order to get that reward, Liu Fan will have to convince Su Ling to put down the obsession in her heart and become her loyal servant. Just like any of us, Liu Fan doesn't understand what the quest menu wants him to do, so he asks Su Ling directly about the obsession she has in her heart. Su Ling, who now goes by Xiao Ling as she has now become a demon thanks to Liu Fan, expresses how concerned she is about her loved ones and relatives who she doesn't know are alive or not. Liu Fan understands Xiao Ling's concerns, so he makes a younger clone of himself and tasks it to escort Xiao Ling back to her village so that she could find out for herself how her loved ones are doing. And before letting them go, Liu Fan gives Xiao Ling another gift, a sharp kunai mixed with his spiritual energy. Xiao Ling becomes truly appreciative of Liu Fan for showing her such kindness, not knowing that he is only doing so in order to get rewards from the quest menu. As she proceeds to take her leave, Xiao Zhu offers to walk her down the road, which is covered in dark miasma. Thanks to all of their help, Xiao Ling smoothly walks through the forest, but finds out that the black miasma has completely disappeared, making her assume that something terrible has happened. As they keep walking, they eventually come across the leftover bones and skulls of the villagers. With the dead body's clothes still intact, Xiao Ling recognizes one of them as her grandfather. As Xiao Ling begins to cry, the clone of Liu Fan uses his spiritual energy to purify all of the dead bodies, letting them re-enter the cycle of life and rebirth, which puts Xiao Ling's heart at ease. She buries all of the corpses, hoping that they can rest in peace, and then proceeds to look for her parents hoping that they have not met the same fate as the others. While exploring the forest looking for more corpses, little Liu Fan senses the military squad to be still near the place where the coffin and the crimson spider lily were. Apparently, they are waiting for Xiao Ling to return so that they can get the flower from her, not knowing that she is already dead. The soldiers reveal to be staring at two corpses who they claim to be Xiao Ling's parents. As Xiao Ling watches the soldiers deliberately disrespecting her parents' corpses, by kicking them and throwing them around, she grabs the kunai, seeking vengeance. But Liu Fan stops her in time, telling her to wait as someone else is making their way there currently. A woman named Mai Yun descends from helicopter there, who seems to be one of the leaders of the military squad. She learns about the situation and doesn't seem to care about the lost flower, as she claims that the thing that was conceived below the coffin is worth far more than it. She jumps down in the pit where the coffin was and digs up the soil around it, revealing that it has turned into a three-life soul soil because of how many lives were sacrificed around it. Because of the discovery of the three-life soul soil, the system increases Liu Fan's intelligence points, letting him see his veins more clearly than ever. He also becomes able to see other beings' veins and looks at Najini, who takes it the wrong way, thinking her king has taken an interest in her slimy body. Because Liu Fan has now unlocked this very special and unique ability, he wonders to what lengths he will be able to use it. He realizes that the veins he is seeing are the flowing spiritual energy as he discovers the entire forest around him to be covered with the same spiritual energy veins. Out of sheer curiosity, Liu Fan begins to follow the veins, because usually it leads to a root, and as anticipated, he finds the root of the spiritual energy veins hidden in the depths of the ground. 
Meanwhile, at the ruins of sarcophagus where the coffin was taken, Mei Yun decides to collect all the three life soul soils for herself. But because she knows the soldiers will let the higher-ups know about this, she decides to take the lives of her subordinates. Knowing that their lives are on the line, the soldiers begin to retaliate, but Mai Yun, who reveals himself to have magical powers, immobilizes the soldiers just by glaring at them and hunts them down one after the other. After murdering all of the soldiers nearby, an evil smile appears on Mai Yun's face as she becomes greatly satisfied by the powers that the Soul Sand has already given her. She reveals that it was her intention all along to get this Soul Sand and had presented her plan to the higher up Lu Yi, implanting the idea in him that he would be able to get many treasures from the coffin. Xiao Ling eavesdrops on everything, and here's Mai Yun confessing that it was she who also came up with the idea to sacrifice the villagers. So she attacks Mai Yun right away, as it is her dire need to take vengeance on the perpetrator who has taken away her loved ones. Although Xiao Ling is a ghost, Mai Yun is able to see her and attacks her back, which Xiao Ling barely dodges. Mei Yun reveals that she has not seen Xiao Ling but only sensed him here because of a magical bracelet that alarmed her about the murdering intent behind her. She reveals that she has more useful gadgets, like the bracelet and brings out a pair of glasses that allow her to see ghosts. This gets Xiao Ling intimidated, who still remains determined to avenge her parents and promises to make Mai Yun pay. Mei Yun claims that those ants, referring to Xiao Ling's parents, died for a greater purpose, which is of course Mei Yun's need to become strong. This certified monster completely triggers Xiao Ling's anger, hence she comes at her again and begins fighting with her in full force. Liu Fan, who has been watching from the sidelines all along, realizes that Mei Yun has dealt with ghosts before because she wasn't surprised when she saw Xiao Ling first. Realizing that Mei Yun can deal with ghosts like Xiao Ling, he immediately assists Xiao Ling by deactivating the bracelet on Mai Yun's hand so that she can no longer detect Xiao Ling's presence. Liu Fan, who knows that Xiao Ling, an amateur ghost, doesn't stand a chance against an awakener like Mai Yun, still decides not to help her as he believes that Xiao Ling's desire to get revenge will lead her to win. Because of his earlier assistance, Mai Yun fails to see the attack coming from behind and dies at her hands. As Xiao Ling begins to celebrate her first win with Liu Fan, Mei Yun surprisingly gets up again, being aware of the fact that Xiao Ling is with Liu Fan. Xiao Ling can't believe that Mei Yun is still alive after taking a direct slash to her neck with the kunai. In any case, Xiao Ling attacks her once again and shows how strong she is, revealing that she had fighting experience by murdering cows in the forest before. Xiao Ling slices off Mei Yun's arm clean, but still she remains standing, making Liu Fan realize that this body might be a clone who has replaced the dead Mei Yun. To confirm if that's the case, Liu Fan uses his newly attained intelligence ability on Mai Yun and discovers that her entire body is covered with the aura of the three life soul soil. This discovery helps him figure out what's really been going on. When Mai Yun dripped her blood on the soul soil before their fight, she became one with that soil, and thanks to the soul's power, Mai Yun reattached her arm to her body. But Xiao Ling doesn't stand by to let her do as she pleases and attacks her again. However, even after being dealt such a deadly blow, Mei Yun remains unshaken and starts laughing like a total maniac as she begins to enjoy her new powers. Using her blood strings, she grabs all of the limbs of Mei Yun and begins to torture her, indicating that she has a bondage fetish. Liu Fan no longer stays in the back line as he cannot stand anyone who dares to bully his people. In the blink of an eye, he rescues Xiao Ling from Mei Yun's hold and using one of the fragments, he turns himself into the shape of a man. Before dealing with Mei Yun, Liu Fan instructs Xiao Zhu and Ling to hold their breath, cover their ears, and empty their minds as things are about to get spicy. Moments after giving them the heads up, the Golden Lion King releases a gigantic roar on Mei Yun, which itself is so powerful that it completely erases her from existence. Now that the battle is over, Liu Fan loots the remains of his opponent's body and collects her sword, which he finds to be rather useful as it increases most of his attack stats. Then, Liu Fan notices that his facial fur hasn't been removed even after activating his human mode using those precious fragments that he got from the quest rewards. He realizes that he will have to collect all of the Yang fragments if he wishes to turn into a complete human which makes him disappointed but at the same time more determined to complete the quests the system will give him in the future. Xiao Zhu instantly falls in love with the new form of Li Fan and compliments him on his new manly look. 
The system notifies Li Fan that he has absorbed the three life soul soil by defeating Mai Yun, which has increased his overall intelligence to level 2. The level upgrade allows Li Fan to see spiritual energy in the air, which makes him feel very powerful. The system also notifies Li Fan that Xiao Ling's quest hasn't been completed yet, giving him the hint that she is not satisfied with her revenge. So he decides to go down in the mountains to investigate this further in order to help Xiao Ling exact her revenge. The sun starts to rise, which alarms both the demons Ling and Zhu because demons like them cannot survive directly in the sun. So they seek shelter from their king who has a young body and is immune to the sun's rays. Liu Fan doesn't like how these two vulnerable, weak women are embracing him without any signs of hesitation, so he tells them to find an alternative, giving them the idea to possess Mai Yun's corpse. Xiao Ling doesn't want to do that, as she thinks Mai Yun is way uglier than her, but because it's a direct order from the king, she's left with no other option but to comply. So in her new body, Xiao Ling begins to walk around the forest with Liu Fan, hoping to find the others who are responsible for the villagers' deaths. Disguising himself as a comrade of Mei Yun, Liu Fan heads to the military base of operations with Xiao Ling, who of course has possessed Mei Yun's dead body. The soldiers welcome Mai back, asking her if she has managed to obtain the thing that she went looking for. Mei replies in the affirmative, and to not arouse any suspicion, she tells the soldiers to go back to their stations. She and Liu Fan take the helicopter to the nearest city called Lion Ridge, where it is seen that many dinosaur-like monsters have failed to infiltrate the walls of the city because of its high security. The pilot driving the helicopter shows Mai Yun the people who are trying to gather resources from the corpses of the ferocious beasts, as even the bones of those beasts can be sold for a large amount of money on the black market. Xiao Ling has had enough of these dumb and cruel soldiers, so once the helicopters land at the helipad, she slices off all of their heads with one slash and steps out to take down the entire organization that is behind such gruesome operations in the mountains. Xiao Zhu, who has been hiding under the cloak of Liu Fan to save herself from the sun, comments on how dull the base of the strong organization looks, making her wonder if Liu Fan's breath itself can destroy it. Liu Fan also thinks that might be possible, but he isn't in a rush and tells Zhu to take it nice and slow as he wants to play with his prey first. Upon entering the tower, they take down many executives of the strong organization with ease and also look for a perfect suit in the meantime that Liu Fan would be able to wear. Liu Fan uses his detection ability, which lets him see through walls, allowing him to locate another woman with a gun who has also sneaked into this facility. So he faces the woman to see which side she is on and as she begins to attack him with a gun that is filled with spiritual energy bullets, he gets impressed. However, the bullets deal no damage to his overpowered body, making the woman realize that she doesn't stand a chance against her current opponent. Thankfully for her, Liu Fan stops showing her any hostility as he realizes that she is not an agent of the strong organization. Although the woman doesn't want to reveal why he came here, she accidentally spouts out that she came here to steal data from this company because they snatched away her own company's development project from them. Liu Fan shows his interest more in the woman's melons than in her backstory and squeezes out a map that was hidden inside them. He sees that this is the map of his territory, but before he can interrogate the woman about what and why she has this map, Liu Yi, the leader of the organization who is the main culprit, arrives at the building diverting everyone's attention towards him. Liu Yi, who is the branch manager, shows Mai Hu, the secretary of the head organization, the coffin the headquarters wanted to bring into their possession so badly. As they are about to move the coffin out, Mei calls Wu Gang, her subordinate, who is as strong as a mountain, to lift the coffin. Apparently all of them are awakeners who, although humans, have surpassed their limitations in this world. Liu Fan becomes amazed at how strong each and every single one of them is and excitedly picks up a fight with them, starting off with Liu Yi. Liu Yi tries to punch Liu Fan several times but fails to land a single one as Liu Fan is much faster and more agile. Liu Fan's toughness increases as the fight continues, which alarms Liu Yi who doesn't understand how he is not able to deal any damage to him. To learn the truth, Liu Yi unveils the cloak of Liu Fan and becomes amazed to see his physique calling him a beast man awakener. Although Li Fan is a mutant lion, he takes it as a compliment and flexes his gorgeous abs. He beats Liu Yi without even needing to touch him, and as a result, he gets many skill points as a reward from the system menu. Mei doesn't believe that a B-rank awakener like Liu Yi was so easily defeated by a nobody. 
so she sends her subordinate Wu Gang to take care of the unfinished job, telling her to defeat Liu Fan. The absolute Madame yeets the coffin at Liu Fan without even considering how precious and fragile it is for the company. Unlike him, Liu Fan does acknowledge how precious the coffins are, so he cushions the landing of them, and after putting them down scolds the obvious idiot for yanking them at him without even thinking twice. Instead of admitting her mistake, Wu Gang bulks up his muscles and gets ready to beat the righteousness out of the Lion King. However, she too is considerably less than a mere insect in comparison to the Lion King, so Xiao Ling intervenes, telling Wu Gang to come and fight her. She stabs Wu Gang on the chest with her dagger, but because of how strong, like concrete, Wu Gang's melons have become, they hold the dagger inside, making Xiao Ling realize that muscle is indeed everything. It needs to be noted that brains are also necessary, and since Wu Gang clearly doesn't have any, she loses to Liu Fan, who instantly knocks her out with just a flick of his middle finger. Mei becomes disappointed seeing how all of her subordinates have fallen, but she claims to have not expected much from them anyway. She thinks that unlike them, she will be able to defeat Liu Fan because she believes she is different from them just because she has a sad backstory. But her sad backstory doesn't help much in her battle, so she chooses the alternative method to allure him using her femininity and goes all out, teasing Liu Fan and telling him to come and do her. This causes Liu Fan to go into berserk mode and lose control of himself. My guy becomes so full of lust that he instantly corners Mei to get his way with her. Xiao Ling, who can't believe what kind of indecent act her king is about to do, asks Xiao Zhu what's wrong with him all of a sudden. Zhu explains that their king has been affected by Mei's special lust fire that has gone totally out of control. According to Zhu, everything in this world has heart fire. The concept is similar to yin and yang. Heart fire is composed of desire fire and karma fire, and both are extremely dangerous fires, so they need to be suppressed by the innate spiritual energy of the user. So because Mei disturbed Liu Fan's desire for fire with her lust for fire, the king has lost his state of mind and is acting only on instinct. If he continues to spend too much time in his disrupted state, there is a possibility that he will be devoured by his own desires and die. Of course, the two Xios don't want that to happen in any case, so they come up with a plan together to extinguish their king's lust fire. In the meantime, Liu Fan begins to fulfill his desires by making Mai suffer, and to be honest, she deserves such vile treatment since she is the one who instigated this scenario. Xiao Zhu is an accumulation of candle fire, underworld ghost fire, god fire, and samity fire, which makes her very compatible when dealing with such things. Therefore, she thinks that if she redirects Liu Fan's attention towards her and bears his lust fire, he will eventually cool down. She tries to absorb his lust fire following the plan and ends up taking in so much of the yang energy that her entire body turns pure golden. Thankfully, Liu Fan finally stabilizes, and once he regains complete control of his body again, he looks at the system menu that informs him about the new technique named Sacred Fire that he has learned by going through that stage. He learns everything from Zhu about what happened and how he lost control of himself, so he punishes Mei, forcing her to kneel down to him and commanding her to tell him why her organization was looking for the Three Life Soul Coffin. Mei states that she does not know what the organization wants with it, but claims to have heard rumors that say that if a person lies in the Soul Coffin, they will obtain a special power called the Inheritance in Illusion, and will be reincarnated instantly. But if the user loses themselves in that illusion, their soul will disperse and their body will turn into dust. Although the risks seem too great, Liu Fan decides to enter the coffin as he desperately desires to become human. So, to test if the coffin actually has anything to offer, he tells Xiao Ling to do it first, making her his experimental guinea pig. Ling happily agrees to be the first one to test the coffin out, as she has already devoted her ghost life to serving Liu Fan. So she proceeds to enter the coffin and enters the state of illusion, finding herself in a purple dark space. When Xiao Lane opens her eyes in the illusionary world, she finds herself in front of her village, back in her human form. She finds it unbelievable that everything has gone back to normal, making her wonder if everything up until now was just a nightmare. Her parents call her by her name, asking her to join them for dinner. Xiao Lane becomes emotional seeing her joyful parents back alive, but realizes that it's a trap made by the illusion. Still, her desire to be with her mom and dad for a small moment leads her to enter her parents' house. As she joins them for dinner, she unknowingly starts spending quality time with her father, forgetting that reality itself is completely fake. 
the illusion successfully tampers with her mental stability and begins drowning her in an eternal slumber. At the same time, Liu Fan from the outside still doesn't drag her out of the illusion and lets things play out, as he doesn't sense anything going wrong up until now. Xiao Ling opens up a restaurant with her parents in the village, which seems to have been her long-awaited dream. Xiao Zhu notices that it's almost time for sunrise, so she warns Liu Fan that if he doesn't bring her back before that, she will be stuck in her slumber for the rest of her life. Liu Fang also notices that Xiao Ling is struggling, so he decides to enter her illusionary world to take her out of there. Thanks to his much-needed intervention, Xiao Ling is brought back to the real world. As everyone is now safe, they have a group hug to celebrate their victory against the illusionary world. The system gives many rewards to Liu Fan for completing the quests and increases all of his abilities even further. Maid, who has been standing behind them all this time, mocks them for acting like an overly emotional family and gets punished by Xiao Zhu for crossing her limits. Liu Fan decides to keep Mai by his side, as it was because of her that he was able to attain so much power in such a short time, making him believe that she will be able to unlock more of his hidden potential in no time. After recruiting her, Liu Fan continues his way to the headquarters of the organization to punish them for disrupting the peace in the Mountain of Lions. Deciding to eliminate every one of the members of the organization, he burns the entire tower when suddenly the system pops up with a big flashy warning announcing that the second spiritual energy recovery is about to commence. In the next early morning at the Mountain of Lions, the system menu keeps popping up everywhere, announcing that the second spiritual energy recovery has begun, which will increase all of the surrounding monsters' powers. This causes all of the animals and beasts in the mountains to suffer from immense pain as their physicality also starts to change with the change of spiritual energy. Meanwhile, the system tasks Liu Fan to expand his area within a day, threatening to murder him if he fails to achieve the goal. So he quickly activates his demonic awareness to look up the surrounding area when he finds out that his friend Pangolin, who was tasked with guarding his golden tree, has fallen with the tree, making him realize that an uninvited guest has entered his fortress. To locate where the perpetrator is, Liu Fan follows the evil spiritual energy they have left behind and finds out that it's a colossal centipede. Apparently, the golden tree bears the legendary golden fruit every 10 years, which only ripens after another 10 years. If someone consumes that golden fruit, they get granted 30 years of demonic powers, and that's why Liu Fan can't believe that three trees were destroyed for no reason. Not only that, but his brother was also hurt by the centipede. Not being able to believe how audacious the centipede is, Liu Fan decides to teach it a lesson by turning it into fertilizer for the golden fruit tree. Declaring war against the colossal centipede, Liu Fan calls out to all of his minions, a parrot, a viper, a war hog, a giant black bear, and a white wolf. He immediately heads to the crime scene with the team, and he finds Pangolin beaten half to death. The giant bear swiftly carries Pangolin to the infantry to get him treated as quickly as possible. In the meantime, Liu Fan continues charging towards the centipede, who not only doesn't realize what type of situation it is in but also dares to roar at the king of the jungle, prompting Liu Fan to roar back at it. However, the green snake stops him, knowing that he will end up completely disintegrating the centipede. She steps up to deal with the centipede alone, dealing with it slowly and painfully in order to make it suffer to the fullest. As the fight ensues between them, Pangolin, who has received enough medical attention, comes back to the battlefield to apologize for not being able to live up to Liu Fan's expectations. Liu Fan doesn't blame Pangolin and tells him not to feel bad for losing once, as many more wins will surely come in the future. He moves their conversation to a much more important matter, which is why the colossal centipede attacked the golden tree. According to Pangolin, the centipede was a mere earthworm before, who was living under the golden fruit tree. But during the second spiritual energy recovery, it unexpectedly mutated, causing it to become stronger as ever. However, the centipede's intelligence did not increase at all during the mutation, so it fell into a frenzy, not being able to understand what was happening to it, and went completely out of control. Afterward, it attacked everything around it, including the golden apple tree, and ate all of the fruits, causing it to become even stronger. The green snake, who has been fighting the centipede, or to be more accurate, the earthworm realizes how troublesome it is. As she cuts through one of its limbs, another head grows from it, just like how a hydra usually regenerates. The giant bear, the parrot, and the white fox also join the battle, acknowledging how strong the colossal centipede is. However, the prideful green snake requests that they stay back, as she wants to prove to the king that she is worthy of being by his side. 
Her heart fills with great conviction, prompting her to surpass her own limits and transform into a demon serpent, who then uses her ultimate move Dragon Breath on the centipede and reduces it to nothing. Now that the green serpent has proven that she is better than everyone, she hopes to get some compliments from everyone. However, everyone is too jealous of her to offer her some nice words. So instead, they accuse her of cheating and call her out for becoming stronger than them by sleeping with the king. The centipede regenerates once again and starts digging underground to escape from the terrifyingly strong green snake. Liu Fan remembers that there is a spiritual energy core just beneath them, which means that the entire area will be in chaos if the centipede accidentally disrupts the energy core. In order to stop the centipede from causing any more unnecessary damage, Liu Fan himself goes underground, activating maximum power, and comes across an ancient relic while looking for the centipede. To everyone's surprise, the centipede reveals that he was murdered by another monster who was peacefully resting inside this ancient relic. That human-looking monster named Ki Luo comes out of her lair with her red umbrella and decides to get rid of the pests who have dared to enter her home. Ki Luo appears to have taken down every subordinate of the Great Black Bear already, claiming that they were weaker than houseflies. Her statement causes the Great Bear to become furious and charge at her to avenge his subordinate but he overestimates his own abilities and gets trapped by the Umbrella Lady's mysterious magic. The others join in to help Bear, but they too get beaten to a pulp by Ki Luo, who mocks Liu Fan for having a bunch of weaklings in his team and provokes him, calling him a little noisy kitten. To show the Umbrella Lady her place, Liu Fan uses his ultimate technique, Lion's Roar, which up until now has managed to one-shot all of his opponents. However, this time things don't turn out in Liu Fan's favor, as the plot requires some interesting villains in the story. So the plot lets the Umbrella Lady block Liu Fan's attack with no difficulty at all. She only gets blown away by the strong shockwaves coming from the roar, but quickly recomposes herself and counterattacks Liu Fan with her own ultimate attack called Devouring Earth and Heavens. As she rapidly spins her umbrella using this technique, it creates strong hurricanes filled with her deadly spiritual energy, hitting every single one of Liu Fan's comrades coming in its way. As the umbrella keeps moving towards Liu Fan, his comrades realize that it has the ability to take the target to another dimension, meaning that it will surely cause serious harm to him, and because they don't want their king to get hurt, they sacrifice themselves in order to weaken the umbrella's momentum. Watching them being erased from this reality and giving their all to protect their king, Liu Fan remembers that time when all of them were still kids and just formed a team together. Back then, Liu Fan wasn't a king but just the leader of their group, who, with his teammates, managed to drive away the Hyena clan from the Mountain of Lions. Just like this moment, Liu Fan has many memories shared with his subordinates, whom he considers to be his only family. For that reason, he becomes furious and demands that Kai Lu get his family back to him, taking an oath to make her pay. As he begins releasing his ferocious aura everywhere nearby, the Umbrella Lady, who is now hidden inside the umbrella, immobilizes and fails to move a muscle. Taking this opportunity, Liu Fan attacks her but fails to do any damage to her. But he keeps persisting and wasting both of his time, so Kei Lu tells him that if he continues to make foolish decisions like this, she will make sure to never release his friends from the other dimension. Realizing that he has no other option but to comply with this evil witch, Liu Fan agrees to do whatever she asks of him. To make things interesting, Kei Lu comes up with the idea to destroy Liu Fan's humility and tells him to lick her feet like a loyal dog if he wants his friends to live. Although this task is clearly atrocious and humiliating, Liu Fan puts his ego aside and puts his mouth close to Ki Lu's feet to lick it. At that moment, he once again remembers becoming friends with his teammates and having a joyous dinner with all of them in the forest when all of them were still kids. For the sake of those precious memories, Liu Fan decides to become Ki Lu's puppy. But psych, he faked it all along just to close their distance and managed to take her red umbrella away from her. Without the possession of the Umbrella, the Jail Dimension breaks and releases all of Liu Fan's friends. However, the battle has just begun, as Liu Fan still needs to beat the umbrella Lady. He opens up the Umbrella to release more people from the direction, not knowing that it's connected to Ki Lu's Lady parts. As he keeps opening and closing the Umbrella, the Umbrella Lady begins to make weird faces while making happy noises. Ki Luo claims that in her hundred years of being a demon, she has never met such a savage who is not only strong but also able to make her climax without even touching her taco. She confirms that running away is her only option for survival, but Li Fan doesn't let her leave after everything that she has caused and runs after her. 
but their chase comes to an unexpected end as Liu reveals that he has the ability to fly and escape smoothly from Liu Fan, who is just a land animal. So he uses the last trick up his sleeve, the sacred fire technique called Golden Flame Devour, which also misses the target. So as Liu begins flying away, Liu Fan shows his displeasure with himself for not being able to make Qi Luo pay. Xiao Ling specifically becomes upset with herself for not being able to help her king and wonders if there is any way for her to fly again. She remembers the time when she was in the copy and accepted the inheritance called the Life Character Formula, which allowed her to have a physical body like Liu Fan. So she uses that same formula to transform into her Yin Soul form from the Yang Soul and immediately dashes towards the Umbrella Demon, hoping that this time she will not disappoint the king. With lightning speed, she catches up to Qi Luo and uses her dagger to once again stab Luo, who barely blocks it using her umbrella. Qi Luo finds it truly bizarre that her new enemy, the Golden Lion, is at a higher level than her and that a mere insect like Xiao Ling can tear through her umbrella using basic attacks. She loses her patience and uses another attack on Ling to get rid of her immediately, sending her to one of the dimensions inside the umbrella called the Infinite Ancient Town. It begins to rain in this realm, which seems to have corrosive properties as it dissolves Ling's clothes and her spiritual energy. Realizing that she cannot afford to stay here for too long, Ling starts heading towards a straight line when she comes across a pool of dissolved demons, making her realize that these demons were once the prey of Qi Luo. So she runs in the opposite direction but somehow ends up back at the same place, making her realize that it won't be easy to escape from this dimension. Not being able to figure out what to do, she keeps running everywhere, realizing that Kai Luo is controlling the space from outside. At that moment, the dagger that was infused with the Lion King's blood increases in size and power, giving Ling possibly the ability to tear her way through the dimension. Using the transformed Long's word, she begins cutting through the walls, which shakes reality itself, making her realize that this dimension might be Qi Luo's true form and not her human body. So she activates her murdering character formula, turning her eyes blood red, and gets ready to get things over with. As she begins to cut through the walls, Qi Luo in the real world begins to feel the pain equivalent to being cut in the stomach. She realizes how much of a dangerous situation she has put herself in by letting Xiao Ling enter her dimension. So she summons all of her Yin Demon soldiers inside her umbrella's dimension in order to take Ling down. Even though thousands of demons easily outnumber Ling, she still comes out as the winner as she is also somewhat overpowered, like her king. Speaking of whom, Liu Fan gets a system warning stating that Xiao Ling has entered an overloaded state, meaning that she has gone out of control. Realizing that Xiao Ling must have activated her new ability that she has no control over, Liu Fan considers the possibility that things will lead to a great disaster if Ling isn't brought back to her senses. Ling, in the meantime, completely annihilates all of the demons all by herself and wrecks the Umbrella Dimension, freeing herself from Qi Luo's hold. On the other side, a group of people makes their way to the Mountain of Lions while cursing the strong organization for seizing their development projects, implying that they are here to take revenge on them. One of them, whose chin looks awfully similar to my Dragon Balls, reveals his intentions to seize all the resources in the mountains for themselves before the government can get their hands on them. As they keep moving forward, they run into Ling, who is still in frenzy mode, ready to murder anyone in plain sight. The guy with the Dragon Ball chin attacks her, presuming that she is someone from the strong organization, and instantly regrets it as Ling slices his arm off clean. But she doesn't stop there, she proceeds to take all their lives and considers having a taste of human blood. Liu Fan arrives there just in time and stops Xiao Ling from making such a mistake by roaring at her as loudly as possible. Using this single attack, he manages to neutralize her and take her unconscious body back to the base. When Ling eventually wakes up on the back of Liu Fan, she apologizes to him immediately, informing him that she has failed to defeat the Umbrella Demon. But Liu Fan reveals to her that when she went into frenzy mode, she had already dealt with the Umbrella Demon. However, the system menu recorrects Liu Fan, informing him that the Umbrella Demon's real body has managed to escape somehow. Since it cannot be helped, Liu Fan moves on and keeps walking forward when suddenly the system menu pops up again, warning him that an unusual object between his teeth is causing him discomfort. Liu Fan puts his paws inside his mouth and finds out that a piece of Qi Luo's umbrella got stuck there when he took a bite into it during their underground battle. He decides to use this piece of fragment to locate the Umbrella Demon and burns it using his life spirit, heart, and fire to establish a connection with it. 
After the completion, the system notifies him that he now has complete control over the Umbrella Demon, making her no longer a threat, so he decides to spare her for now. Later at the base, the Great Bear, Parrot, and Pig welcome Mai from the Strong Organization and the girl named Shuang, who infiltrated that facility back then, to their home. Apparently they are brought here by Liu Fan, who gives Shuang the unfortunate news that the exploration team from her company was completely wiped out at the foot of the mountain. However, he lies about who was behind the brutal murders, saying the Umbrella Demon was the perpetrator. Liu Fan mentions to them that he rescued a single survivor from that construction group, claiming that person to be Ling and introducing her to Shuang and Mei. All of these lies are part of a big plan by Liu Fan to make Ling gain Shuang and Mei's trust so that she can extract vital information from them about the strong organization and the construction group. Just as planned, Shuang instantly falls for it and hugs Ling, showing her deepest sympathy for the unfortunate events she has been through. Now that Shuang's part is done, Liu Fan turns to Mei and tells her that she will have to stay at the Mountain of Lions to help him cultivate the sacred fire technique. Knowing that Mai will refuse to stay here, Liu Fan forcefully makes her stay at his cave and gets ready to practice dual cultivation later at night. Shuang and Ling decide to head back as they no longer have any business staying here. As a departing gift, Liu Fan gives both of them a bunch of golden fruits, and to make sure that no one becomes envious, he announces that all of the treasures of his territory will be equally divided and distributed. His decision helps everyone improve their cultivation to the maximum, and soon, all of the monsters in his territory will become even stronger, leading to a much bigger mountain expansion campaign. In a short amount of time, Liu Fan's strength also doubles up, and so he makes preparations to get more area in his territory for the betterment of his subjects. Ling begins working with Shuang at the construction company and becomes a spy for them to infiltrate the strong organization. On the other hand, such advancement of the Mountain of Lions alarms the arrogant king of the nearby territory, the Vigorous Tiger. The system awards Liu Fan with two body yang fragments and raises his level of accumulation strengthening skill and earth shock skill by one level each. Suddenly, the system alerts Liu Fan that the expanded territory has been lost, which Li Fan finds to be rather strange as he just claimed that area. Not understanding what's going on, Li Fan calls up the Great Black Bear, asking him if everything is going all right. The bear assures him that everything is under control, but because Li Fan knows that the system never gives him any wrong information, he sets out to figure out himself as to what's going on. The system again pops up, warning Li Fan that another one of his sub-territories has been infiltrated and secured by the enemy making him realize that this unknown enemy is going to be strong. Not knowing who the enemy is, Liu Fan uses his detection skill and finds thousands of rats lurking underground. Realizing that these rats were the perpetrators behind the sudden invasion, he exterminates all of them nearby. However, it is still strange that these swarms of rats are appearing out of nowhere, making Liu Fan suspect that someone else might be behind this invasion. Meanwhile, the rats emerge where Liu Fan's main subordinates are and attack them. Even after murdering hundreds and thousands of them, the group failed to reduce the number of rats, making them realize that they stand no chance against this unconventional enemy. As if the rats weren't troublesome already, they begin to gather around and form a giant colossal rat, which begins to wreak havoc everywhere. Thankfully, the king of the jungle makes it in time to save his dear jungle, and telling his friends to get out of the way, he launches a massive attack on the colossal rat, taking it down with ease. Seeing the power of the King of the Mountain of Lions, the rats get scared and run to the underground again, seeking shelter from their own king, the vigorous tiger who commends them for their hard work. Liu Fan uses his destructive powers again to create a ravine beneath him so that he can enter the underground and get things over with the rats. But this time his plan doesn't work, as it reveals that the rats have dug too deep and have escaped. Still, the subordinates of Liu Fan, including the green snake and the ferocious rabbits, head straight in to pursue the rats, hoping to enter their base of operations. Eventually, the green snake finds the king of the rats and assumes that if she defeats it, she will be able to exterminate all of the rats with ease. After destroying the rat king by injecting her venom into it, the green snake loses most of her energy. But to her surprise, the giant rat wasn't the king that the rats were following, making them realize that the real king was hiding himself deliberately. Meanwhile, the rats find their way to the main veins of the spiritual energy core and start taking bites into them, making them stronger than ever. The system informs Liu Fan about it, so he quickly brings Mei by his side and asks her to find the king of the rats for him since she has expertise in luring people. 
However, instead of going to look for the Rat King, Mei tempts Liu Fan, showing him her juicy peach, and awakens his hidden power with her magic of lust. But unlike last time, Liu Fan controls himself and channels the sensation to connect with the spiritual energy in the ground. With this move, he manages to successfully find all of the rats and blows up all of the spiritual energy veins mildly to destroy all the rats. After successfully stopping the rat invasion, Liu Fan is finally at ease, but not for too long, as the vigorous tiger is just getting ready and summoning more of his rat army, who all eat the spirit veins on a large scale, getting ready for an all-out war. Liu Fan knows that, at this rate, he will surely lose all of his subordinates who are undergroomed, so he considers using his most secret technique. To find out what that technique is, you'll have to stay tuned to the next series. That's it for today's recap. Give us a like and subscribe for more videos. See you next time.